Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Daryl Green. World Purpose is off tonight. The two young South Memphis boys who raped a toddler faced a judge for sentencing today. And while they did not get jail time because of their ages, they were taken from their homes to undergo treatment. Fox 13's Marcus Hunter attended the sentencing. He joins us now in the studio with all the details. Marcus. Yeah, Gerald, the mother of the seven-year-old broke down into tears in the courtroom when she was told by a judge that she could not take her son back home with her. The kids who committed the crime, nine and seven years old. Their victim, only two. The prosecuting attorney, Chris LaRoe, told me today that he wanted help for the two young men because he believes that they are also victims of a crime. Now, I also talked to a psychologist today, and she told me that, you know, when children this young act out in the manner that these two young men act out, it's normally something that they learn maybe possibly in the home or also something that they learn by watching TV, maybe a relative or even a neighbor could have taught them something uh, like this. Uh, and now, this is a case that is not uncommon common in today's society. One thing that we do know that this is becoming more and more, um, you know, it's happening more and more often and children are learning things from a lot of adults that they probably should not be learning and it's up to the parents to make sure that the things that they teach their children are only the right things. Monday at juvenile court, two young boys ages 9 and 7 were turned over by a judge to the Department of Children's Services after a trial last month determined they were both guilty of raping a 2-year-old girl. Judge Dan Michael removed the boys from their home because he said their behavior was not age appropriate. He also said the behavior may have been learned at home. She came to court with her 7-year-old and she's going home without him. So I'm not sure it's anything I can say other than that. It's very, very emotional. Samuel Jones represents the seven-year-old. He admits his client could benefit from getting help, but believes taking the seven-year-old out of his home with his mother is not the answer. But this sort of thing is something that we see from time to time in our society, and uh, all of the professionals in involved are, are challenged by it, and I think they are trying to make the best decision that they can. Psychologist Dr. Charlotte Freeman has worked with children for more than 15 years. She says it's not uncommon for young children to be curious about their body and the body of others. As children grow, they may encounter and engage in sexual play. But as they get older, when we look at children who uh, have an age gap of more than five years, then we start to consider other issues in terms of what they've been exposed to, maybe have they been perpetrated on. So children will have sexual play, but as they get older and the dynamic is different in terms of their age, then we start to consider other avenues. But she also says when it comes to the act of rape where penetration is involved, there is when it's a serious problem. That's when you really should be concerned, is when you see children who are inserting objects into other kids, um, when you see um, where there is, um, you know, constant touching of other kids. Um, that's when you should really be concerned. Freeman also told me today that because the victim was only two years old, it's unlikely that she will have any memory of the incident ever happening. Daryl? Marcus, I can only imagine that today was a traumatic uh, event for everyone involved, but what about the two co-defendants? What were they like in the courtroom today? Yeah, you know, both co-defendants were, you know, they're nine and seven, but they were a small nine and seven, uh, you know, no more than three feet tall for either either of the two co-defendants. Um, you know, in the courtroom, the seven-year-old, he was obviously afraid um, earlier on. The uh, He asked the bailiff if he can go back outside and be with his mother for a while and she allowed him to do that he went outside stayed with his mother came back in when it was time for the uh for, for the judge to uh, give his ruling but uh, and after the judge gave his ruling the seven-year-old cried just along with his mother i could only imagine now, what are the options for all these families involved now well, right now, um, the families, they can ask for a new judge, and uh, that judge can change the decision on the decision that was made today. I know before they even left the courtroom today, the mother of the seven-year-old, she stayed around juvenile court to fill out the paperwork to try to get a new trial and a new judge. All right, thank you. That's Fox 13's Marcus Hunter reporting.